who knew when I started this adventure that I'd be fighting the flu, fighting hail, hailing. It is hailing right now. Hills, oh good golly, will this hill ever end? That's crazy, crazy. You live out in the Louisiana area, central Louisiana area in particular, where I'm from. If you've ever been out on the Backbone Trail, I really encourage you to do so. This will be my third night out on the trail in the last couple years. Uh, I'll put links down below to the other videos. One of them was with a buddy. Uh, we had a really nice time that night. We um, we stayed at a campsite we thought was really really nice. Turns out, like within oh about a minute walk through the woods from there was an even nicer spot, and that's where I'm hoping to stay tonight. Anyway, the reason it's called the Backbone Trail is this side of the trail basically goes along all the way to a pretty large river. I shouldn't say that, to a pretty large stream. And that's gonna be our water source for tonight. There's no water along this ridge because we're kind of walking along the backbone of this mountain or this little hill. This is about as mountainous or as hilly as it gets for Louisiana, but really encourage anyone out in central Louisiana area or the south for that matter. Look up this, this trail. It's uh, it's worth your time. You'll see soon that you'll get vistas here you do not get anywhere else in Louisiana. Alright, so I'm about a mile in and uh, doing alright. Trying to remind myself to stop and drink, which I have a tendency not to do. So far, uh, you know, I always like to stop about a mile in and kind of see how I'm feeling. Continue to be very impressed with this 3FUL backpack, fairly ultralight backpack. Not the lightest backpack you can find, but for 60 bucks or something, 65 bucks shipped from China, pretty, pretty good deal. I got out of the car and uh, I didn't fully weigh this at the end. I weighed it last night and I was right at 20 pounds. I added another um, bottle of smart water, which is about two pounds. So probably looking at about 22, 23 pounds. Pulled it out of the car and I thought, man, this thing's heavy. Uh, but you, you strap it on and you just don't feel it. You don't feel it that bad. It really, really rides well. So anyway, mile in, got about four and a half miles, I think, to where I'm gonna plan on camping tonight. Hopefully it's open, so. We will see. Let's keep rolling. Got a lot of cool things in store for this trip, hopefully. All right, if you're coming from this way, this is the first campsite you'll find. It's a nice area, a nice established fire pit. I've stopped here several times to eat and I think I'll do the same today. All right, so I'm gonna make a little lunch here. Food and my cook kit, that's it. I always put that stuff at the top of your kit so you don't have to reach down too much to do it. One of the interesting things about this trip in particular is I'm doing 100% paleo. Um, got paleo meals, I'll show you guys a little bit more uh, down the road. In fact, I'm going to have a full video on all the gear that I brought. I'll film that a little bit later. It'll be a separate video before this, so you should already know what I brought. But uh, pretty interesting. Going to do all paleo. Should work really well. I got two paleo meals here. This is going to be the one that I eat. Let's see whatever it is here. So you see, it's Wild Zora paleo meals to go. This is the mountain beef stew. That's going to be lunch. It calls for one and a half cups, so. My ultralight kit. I have several videos on this. I always kind of do different variations and stuff. Wow. 
Once again, I forgot to bring my uh, windscreen, so I'm just gonna put this little rock right here. All right, guys, boil. Man, that's loud. Make sure we're not too hot. Take the pack out of here. Make sure you get that little desiccation pack out. It says 10, or it says five to 15 minutes depending on altitude, which means in Louisiana, we should probably do it in two minutes, but nonetheless, we're gonna let it go about 10 minutes and see how it goes. Oh, it feels good to get the pack off for a little bit. We've got about two miles and a little bit of a itinerary for you guys so you can know kind of what to expect on this trip. Got a couple of things planned, which is kind of cool. Uh, basic backpacking trip. Like I said, I didn't really worry too much about going ultralight because I'm only going four and a half miles or five miles in each way, so about 10 miles total. I'm just gonna try to enjoy it, you know, try to really enjoy my time out here. Uh, I've got a couple of new things to review for you guys. I've got some uh, review videos I'm gonna make. I finally review my tent, which is good. Everybody's been asking for that. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. I've got a new Helinox chair that I'm gonna do a review on as well. So stay tuned for those down the road here on the channel. If you see them in the video, reviews are coming. The place we're going is, is, is a pretty good overlook. Probably, I would say, the best overlook in all of Louisiana as far as the backpacking trail goes. That's where I hope to camp tonight. A couple other fun things. We're gonna obviously uh, collect some firewood, start a fire tonight. Gonna do a little story time. Gonna talk to you guys about uh, why, why I started my YouTube channel. I think that's kind of an interesting topic. A lot of people out there wonder why and also are interested in doing it. And I'll tell you a little bit about my experience on YouTube so far. Uh, I also brought my new um, travel fishing kit. Uh, I doubt I'll catch anything, but I do know there's a fairly large stream down here. It may have a little bit of running water. So I brought my fishing rod and a little small thing of tackle. And see if we can catch some fish. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? But yeah, we're out here to do a little fishing, hopefully. Uh, do some reviews, uh, relax, enjoy. Start up a fire, tell some stories, and that's it. Let's see what we got, guys. It's been plenty of time. My gosh, there's a lot of food in here. Probably gonna eat a little bit now, maybe a little bit later. The thing about these paleo or healthier meals is they actually taste like food. They don't taste like, um, you know, processed food. Ingredients on this, grass-fed beef, organic carrots, sweet potatoes, onion, broccoli, mushrooms, celery, green onion, sea salt, marjoram, thyme, garlic, and parsley. That's it. All natural, healthy. All right, lunch is done. Man, I'll tell you, that meal is filling. I could only eat about half of it. And I really haven't eaten much today, so. Strap this up here. I did have a family, husband and wife with their two kids head that way. I imagine they're probably going to eat lunch at the overlook that I want to camp at, so I'll just go a little bit past it, do some fishing and stuff, and wait for them to leave. But anyway, beautiful day. Let's hit the road again. This is really the only intersection you have to worry about. High Ridge Trail goes that way, as you can see, and you just want to stay on the backbone, which is this way. I have been down that way before. It's pretty, but not much down there if you're coming out here. It's worth a trip, but it's not, uh, not mandatory. All right, little stop here. I'm not good at hydrating, so I'm making sure that I hydrate Whew, every mile or so. It's gonna be a high of about, um, I think 60, 62 today, something like that. Low tonight's actually gonna dip down to about 37. So, be a little chilly. All right guys, so kind of as I expected, that family that's out for a day hike is over at the spot that I want, but that's okay. I'm at a spot right near it. I'm gonna sit here for a little bit. <sighs> this place has got some firewood already cut. Let me show you guys the view here. This is where my friend Philip and I actually stayed. Let's see back there how pretty it is. It's an even prettier um, campsite over there. So we're gonna head over there soon. Down that way is 
the, uh, the stream that we're going to do a little fishing at. So what I might do is just put my stuff here and uh, head down and do some fishing. Just kind of screw around a little bit, then come back up and see if they're gone. Decided just to keep coming down, even though I'm carrying this pack. That's good exercise for me. Heading down, y'all can't see, but I'm going down a pretty steep grade. This steep grade goes straight down to the creek. Keeping an eye out here for a nice piece of down hardwood, but I'm just not seeing anything. There's been a relatively recent controlled burn, so a lot of these small underbrush, all these are dead, so I can cut them and burn them. They just will burn fast, so. I'm gonna pay attention, because this looks a little gnarly, and we'll see y'all down at the stream. I ain't gonna catch anything, because there's nothing in there, but I'm gonna get my fishing rod out. There's one area that's kind of dark. It looks deeper, so if there's anywhere that's going to have it, it's gonna be there. This is actually my EDC emergency fish kit. Um, I'm gonna do an actual video on that soon, trying to catch a fish with it. I just bought this two inch um, mailing tube that I uh, initially cut too small and then added this nice uh, decorative duct tape um, just to make it look nicer. There we go. Two pieces. Like all of them, just screw this on here. Nice and tight. Let me string this up and we'll go throw the line. My spot should be clear now. Family just went by, crossed the uh, river here. Dad took one for the team and just carried each of the kids over after taking his shoes off. There are no fish in this creek, but um, that I can see at least. But this, uh, this rod works really well so far. Oh, butterfly. Rod works really well so far. I was afraid that with, uh, I think I have uh, 10 pound test on here. It's just monofilament and um, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to cast it very well, but it actually works pretty well I do think that if there were fish in here, I'd be able to catch them Because this rod works really well Especially when you get it caught up on the trees oh, Here we go Excellent. This is definitely the wrong pound test because it's just hard to keep it from getting tangled on itself. But if you're careful, you can do it. So despite the fact that I'm not going to catch anything because there's no fish, really happy with this so far. Um, this is an Akuma. It's called the Akuma Voyager VS20. And like I said, it, uh, it works very well. Easy to cast. Um, obviously very easy to, to put together. Ooh, that felt like a fish. But it was a stick. Very easy to put together and easy to pack. I'm gonna head back up there now and uh, set up camp about uh, two o'clock I'm gonna head up there set up camp and uh, before I do let me just show you guys how I packed it up and it came with a very nice and but very big and bulky case which I'll show you guys when I do the review so what I decided was I was wanted something that I could carry just the rod in pretty compactly so of course two sides to this we've got the reel and the rod. The rod is simple, just take it apart. And like I said, I got this, this is two inches. It just fits right in there really well. Put the top on and I can put this in my backpack and not worry about it. It's hard, uh, not worry about it messing up. Now before I leave, I'm gonna get my water and fill it up. Let me show y'all. I'm definitely not going to waste my trip down here to the water. I've walked half a mile down this hill and I'm definitely going to fill up 
my 64 ounces of water in my sorry bag here so that when I get back up there, I can use my gravity filter to get some water. Can't get any easier, guys. Just pull the top off here. Make sure this is on good. Open it up, and we should start to get water. Oh, that's nice. <sighs> okay, now what I'm really not looking forward to. Clouncing up that hill back to the uh, campsite. We're gonna do it. Keep an eye out for some really good close wood. I'll have to head back down. I've got pretty much all the water that I need. I've got 64 ounces here. Probably not a full 64. It's hard to get it completely full. Close to 64. And I've got both of my 1.1 liter smart water bottles. So I have plenty of water. Uh, probably will come back down in the morning to uh, to fill up again before I leave because I don't want to have to be stingy with water. But I'm talking to avoid the obvious. Let's go. Give me a long fly. Give me a long. Sweet home. All right, guys, so here's the situation. Here's the campsite. It is awesome. Just so nice. Got some spots set up my tent right back over here. Here's the problem. Listen, super hollow, it's super big, and it's super close to the campsite. So, as much as I really, really like this spot, I'm going to stay the night in the same place I stayed last time because there's no overhanging trees. Even though it's supposed to be calm tonight, all that stuff, guys, just doesn't, not worth it. So I'm going to pick my stuff up and go about three, 400 yards that way. All right, this time I really mean it. This is the camp. This is where I'm gonna cook and stuff. Actually, a little bit down there, I'll show you in a second where I'm gonna set up the tent, so. Woo. Okay, been pretty busy here. As you can see back behind me here, let's see. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. There's my tent. I'll show you guys what I got down there. All right, this is the 3FUL Land Shan. Inside, I've got my Thermarest Neo Air X Lite, extra long pad, as well as my top quilt from Hammock Gear. It's 40 degree with two ounces of overstuff. Got a couple other things in there. Got the tent looking pretty good. It's not perfect, but I'm going to take it. It's not going to be windy. You can see I've set it up kind of behind this little hill here. Um, no dead trees that can fall on me, which is very nice. I have a little bit of an angle here, but not too extreme. Certainly not going to be an issue sleeping tonight. So I've got my tent ready to roll. Now, because I do want to have a fire tonight, I've got to go get some wood. Which means I've got to go back down the hill. But that's alright. It's uh, 3.15, so i got plenty of time. And uh, I'd like to be back around 4 o'clock and be here for the night. Not going to bring the camera down to get wood. You guys have been down there before. I'm going to leave all my stuff here. I'm going to head down. First thing I'm going to do is eat a quick snack, I think. Nah, I'm not going to eat a snack. It's nice to have camp set up. So I'll go get some firewood and I'll be back. Okay, so sort of bad news. There's actually a really, really good spot over there for the tent that has like no tilt to it. I just whiffed it earlier. The question becomes, do I move the tent?
We'll show you guys real quick the uh, gravity system. This is really simple. You can buy a gravity system. They're really expensive uh, that I've seen, you know. Uh, Sawyer has a new one. I want to say it's like $40, maybe less. But you can get like platypus and those. They're like 100 bucks. All I did was really simple. This is a 64 ounce Sawyer bag. I'll show you guys that. See grommets? I put metal grommets. Little brass grommets, basically. And that allows me to tie this on, okay? Inside of my Hidden Woodsman water pouch, I've got this, which is just a length of uh, tubing. I believe this is, I will put a link down below. Pretty sure it's by Platypus. It's just an extender. And then it has a kind of a little quick release here. A little quick release, okay? I attach the quick release to the Sawyer and pop it on there. And all you gotta do is attach this at the bottom. You attach that on the bottom, and then when you undo this and open it, you get water. Now, of course, I'm not gonna sit here and waste it. You get the general idea. But for the cost, you can put a Sawyer Mini on here. You can probably put a Sawyer Micro, whatever you wanna do. Um, you can just hang it like this anytime you need some water. Just make sure it's down below the level of gravity and you can get yourself some water. I'm gonna put this top away inside of my little bag so that I don't lose it. I'll just hang this right here, and anytime I want it, I can come get some water. All right, I've gone long enough. I'm gonna make some coffee. In the effort to be paleo on this trip, I have this. This is Nut Pods. Pods Original Creamer, unsweetened, dairy-free, no carbs, and I've used it, and it actually does taste pretty good. You can blow up some water, and we're gonna make some instant coffee. It's four o'clock, so we're going decaf, so I can sleep tonight. That's good. All right, so it's starting to get a little darker. Put on this long sleeve shirt. It is chilling off pretty good. Uh, I don't know what the temperature is. Got to about 62, 64 today, and it was pretty warm. I, I got sweaty a little bit, but it's probably near 50, and like I said, it's gonna go to around 38, 39 degrees tonight. Been working on my fire setup here. I've got a bunch of this kind of smaller stuff. And then I've got a bunch of this wood and it's just cut up into kind of quarters. So I have some thinner uh, material and then some longer pieces. This is more fuel. For once things get really more established, I am gonna continue to relax. I've just been hanging out. I actually have good cell signal here, which is kind of nice. Just sent you guys a picture of uh, this place and uh, on the community page. So just letting y'all know where I'm at and uh, touch base with my wife and my kids. Unfortunately, <laughs> they're all pretty sick. Um, probably wouldn't have left today if I would have known they would all get sick, but nonetheless, I'm out here now. It's kind of too late to go back and all they're doing is hanging out and sleeping anyway, so. I had hung up my bag, but I did, my food bag, but I decided I'm gonna go ahead and hang up the entire backpack. Uh, one of the hard parts about this area is it's all pine trees. And you know, a lot of these pine trees don't have limbs that are very low. The way I hang up my, my bag is really simple. I have one of these little bear bag kits from uh, Z-Packs. So you just fill this up with rocks. I've got this uh, Zing It. I don't remember how much it comes. It comes like 50 feet, it's quite a bit. What I did was I tied a bowling knot on each end and I have these little, it comes with these little carabiners, okay? Little bitty carabiners you can see. Um, so I'll just loop this around the rock bag and what that allows me to do is throw this rock bag over, you know, a limb. And, uh, <laughs> and then I can hang it. It's not that tip, it's not that difficult. So let me see if I can get it done. Oh, that was so close. Money. All right, got it. Second throw, not bad. Like I said earlier, uh, and there was a big sign on the way in. This is Louisiana black bear country. It's coming back. I'm not gonna see a bear, but I wish I, wish I could see a bear, but they're very hard to see because they're, they're, they're just not a lot of them. But, but the Louisiana black bear is making a comeback, so make sure you hang your stuff. Got most of the heavy stuff out of it. Only real concern are these little bitty carabiners, but I think they'll be okay. They gotta be rated for at least 
15 pounds, right? So as it keeps getting dark a little later, whenever I uh, go to bed, I'll just pull it up there and we'll be good to go. Getting things kind of settled for the night. Got my meal out. This is the Wild Zora Paleo Meals to Go Summit Savory Chicken. Wish I had some of that Thai curry I had on the last trip. That was good. Definitely not paleo though. So kind of settling down here. What I do when I'm out backpacking like this is as the sun's going down, I like to know where everything is. I have everything ready for my fire. My headlamp's right over there hanging from the tree, so I know exactly where it is, so I'll have light tonight. It's fully charged. I made sure it was fully charged this morning. Got my tent right down there ready to go. I got my water over here. Um, I need to drink more. Uh, I still have my entire bag of water from that I filled up. I, didn't even, I haven't even used it. I have about, uh, I flavor my water. Uh, it usually helps me drink it a little bit better. Um, I have about two-thirds of a liter of flavored water and about two-thirds of a liter of regular water uh, for cooking tonight. And then I have 64 ounces up there. So I'm good on water. All my stuff's charge it, charged or charging, which is good. And uh, all I have left out of my bag is my down jacket, which I'm going to need soon enough. My cook kit, which I'm going to need to cook dinner. Actually, I need to get out my uh, fire making stuff. It's in the backpack, so I'll need to get out my ferro rod and a couple things there, my knife. All right, we're going to get this fire started. What I've got is waxwood stick, and I've got my small light my fire ferro rod. Too worried about where all this is going at the moment, because I'll collect it. There we go. Get our big old thing going here. Put up my goods. Some wood here. All right. See what that stuff really takes off, doesn't it? That was a uh, zero to sixty in no time. Now's when the rubber's gonna hit the road. It made a lot of noise. Is it gonna go? I think we're gonna get lucky and get a couple of those pieces to catch. Realistically, guys, I did not have a very good stage system. I just had a lot of, at the beginning, all that dry stuff that just kind of took off like an inferno. Maybe that'll catch the fire a little bit. So, I thought tonight talk a little bit about uh, my YouTube channel. Why I started it and what the plans are with it. And I got this creepy lighting to do it with. That would be my headlamp in the tree. So why did I start a YouTube channel? Um, I got a pretty busy life, as most of y'all probably know. Full-time practicing physician. And... That is a busy job. I also have two kids, and I am happily married to the love of my life for 20 years. Why add this craziness? I mean, I'm gonna turn off this light. Let me see if this will work. So YouTube, why YouTube, huh? Well, a couple of reasons. You know, my initial thought was, man, I love messing with gear. I love getting gear. Maybe I could have a channel where people will give me gear. And that has happened. Y'all have seen that on the channel. Ultimately, what I figured out was that really interacting with everybody is the best part. Uh, from the very beginning, I've made some amazing acquaintances and friends here on YouTube, uh, whether it be uh, fellow YouTubers or uh, viewers, whatever it might be. It kind of started out as a way to, um, <laughs> you know, justify getting some gear maybe to my wife and say, hey, you know, I'm going to do this channel, so I need to buy this stuff. And in the end, it does turn out working that way, uh, and, it, and it is a business, and that's something we'll talk about a little later. It's one of those things where um, it takes a while, guys. I mean, uh, if any of you are thinking about starting a YouTube channel, I can tell you that constant hard work, it will take you four to five years until you can start to actually make a little bit of money. 
I am at the point now where I make a little bit, and when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. So if you think you're going to get into YouTube and it's going to be an overnight success story and you're just going to end up doing super well from the very beginning, you are absolutely wrong. So I started YouTube for an opportunity to, to play with gear. Um, still is that, of course, to a large extent. But it has allowed me to really grow my love of being outside. And that's the best part of YouTube to me. Like I said earlier, it is a business, and that is something that I have been very aware of from the very beginning. So there are a lot of benefits to being on YouTube. It's just a tremendous amount of work. Right now, I put in countless hours a week planning, um, thinking about things. I'm really, you know, always thinking about things that I can do on the channel to make it grow. Soon the next um, part of that evolution will be my kids, in particular my son coming out with me. He's going to be coming on quite a few trips coming up, which is going to be fun. He'll be on the channel. He's been on the channel before. Um, he's an absolute riot. And I think he's going to add some definite humor to Paleo Hiker MD. So that's going to be a natural evolution of the channel is just getting him more involved. It's been an evolution on YouTube. Started as something where I just wanted to play. Uh, I realized quickly how much work it was going to be and I had to make a decision as to whether or not I was going to continue it or not. And I have made a decision to continue it. I plan to continue it long term. Um, I would like my channel to continue to grow over the next 10 to 15 years. And part of my retirement plan is doing YouTube. It may or may not happen, but that is the current plan. Uh, life always has a way of changing, so maybe that won't be the case. But that is my current view on how I want to do things. YouTube's hard. You know, you see a lot of people talk about that. They talk about burnout. They talk about all that stuff. It's real. It's very, very real. But really, it's all about the future. And you have to have that mindset. And that's kind of the point, I guess, of my talk is... I started my YouTube channel for a specific reason and it's turned into something more. It's turned into a significant goal. It's turned into a significant goal of me wanting to do something that's hard. And the reason I can do that is because I'm not in a hurry. And I think that's a lot of the problem. I have no intention whatsoever of going full time on YouTube. <laughs> my my uh, business plan, as you might say, is to be much more calm with the way that I do things. I'm afforded the luxury of not being in a hurry. And I think that's really important. Some people get into YouTube and they think, I'm gonna make money on YouTube. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a YouTuber. And um, that's a hard road. Well, some people can do it. I'm allowing myself the opportunity to just enjoy YouTube for what it is right now, which is a distraction, which is fun, which is the ability to get outside. And soon, the ability to share more of that time with my kids. Uh, like I said, in particular, my son, he's a Weebelow. Uh, we're spending more and more time outside. He is expressing more of an interest in getting outside with me, which is exciting as I'll get out. Because that's kind of what I've been waiting for. Yeah, so I think that was a really weak fireside chat. Uh, I rambled like crazy. Don't even know if that made any sense whatsoever. Awesome. Fire got going though. I've made an executive decision that I'm not gonna cook up any dinner. I'm not that hungry. And instead I'm just gonna eat some of this paleo jerky. Mmm. That's good. This is a um, buffalo chicken jerky. That's really good. It's about seven o'clock, which is pretty typical for me on these campouts, I'll end up going to sleep or get in the tent about 7.30 or 8, reading for about an hour on my phone usually. Sometimes I bring the Kindle. This time I didn't, I just got my phone. It is a nice night out here, guys. It is quiet, it is clear, it is calm. Stars are out, starting the process of just kind of burning this down. I want to get in my tent, but I want it to be a little bit more calm down before I leave it for the night. I won't put any 
uh, water on it or anything. First of all, I don't I don't need to because <laughs> it's in this nice contained fire pit. Second of all, I don't want to uh, waste the waste the water. <laughs> I may actually get away with not having to go all the way down to the uh, stream again tomorrow. I think I have enough water to make breakfast and possibly even to make coffee. And then, you know, I probably only need one of the one liters of water. So I should be good to go tomorrow. All right, guys. It is uh, about 9 o'clock and I am ready to go to bed. I've uh, been reading for a little while, just touch base with my wife, and hoping to get a nice good, uh, good night's sleep. So, we'll check in in the morning. Hope everything is well with everybody. I'm going to put this battery to charge before I go to bed, so I'll have a full charge in the morning with everything. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Coyotes everywhere out there, they're just going crazy. And uh, ready to get some sleep. See you all in the morning. What's up guys? It's early. No, actually it's not bad. It's seven o'clock. Sun's just coming up. I can see it through the tent right there. I'm ready for a little sun. I ain't gonna lie, it was cold. Kind of the same thing I always struggle with, which is temperature control. I'm either cold or I'm sweating. It got cold last night. I don't know. I mean, it's still cold. 36 degrees. So it's pretty chilly. I'm going to get up and get dressed. And I'm going to make some coffee. Coffee will be excellent right now. Not a bad view to start out the morning. It's already warming up. You can kind of see up there. It's my bag. Sun is nice. Coffee's better. See down in the valley, just see 20, 30 crows. You can probably hear them, maybe. Forget that. A hundred crows. Going crazy. The pound I added for this chair pays off. Feet are cold. The review last night, kind of as usual, because it was fairly warm yesterday. The temperature really dropped through the night, so I got into the tent about 8.30. Felt okay. Um, what I had to sleep with, if, if, if it wasn't clear, um, I have my down sleeping quilt. Again, it's a 40 degree with a two ounce uh, overstuff. So probably down to right at 36, which is where it was last night. Now, of course, that's just um, survival level, not comfort. So I have that Sea to Summit Reactor uh, Thermalite pad liner, and it's very comfortable. It's actually really nice, almost like getting wrapped in micro fleece. And the beginning of the night, it was hot, too hot. So uh, my legs got sweaty, my feet were hot. And then throughout the night, um, it just takes a little while for <laughs> the temperature to change, and you're constantly kind of battling it. To wake up in an hour and I'd be sweaty so I would take the thermalite and just kind of roll it down below my knees so that everything was nice and cool and at one point I even took off my uh, long sleeve shirt and, and just slept and I was sleeping in, in, in underwear and t-shirt no socks and uh, was hot and then I woke up around 2 30 in the morning uh, cold so uh, my feet were cold um, put on my socks and put on my top again, pulled up my bag liner, and it um, was still too hot up top. So I kind of just put the thermalite around my, my waist and fell back asleep. And then I woke up about 3.30 uh, cold, really cold. 
uh, from the top up. So at that point I put up everything and I actually snapped the top of my sleeping quilt and cinched it so it basically was a cocoon over my whole head and I slept like a log from about 3.30 till, gosh, I think I got up at, uh, it was light, it was, it was bright. The sunrise this morning was at 6.44 according to my watch. Yeah, 6.44. I got up and it was sun. It was, the sun was out, so it was right at seven. Yeah, it was an adventurous night, but it was a good night. I think I would sleep way, way better if it was just either hot or it was cold, and it, the temperature didn't change so much. Like I slept like a log once um, it got really cold, and I was able to just cover up and go to bed. I did get up once to pee, which was cold. So a little bit about the paleo food. This um, original grainless granola by Steve's Paleo Goods, Paleo Crunch. Oh man, it's good. Hit the spot this morning. All right, I'm gonna chill out here for a little while and um, work on getting the tent put away here soon. See how that goes. And of course, my daughter, poor little daughter, has a fever. And very well may have the flu, so I'm gonna try to get home and get her to the office to test her for the flu. Which means I'll be kind of in a hurry. I'm gonna make sure I don't go too fast or hurt myself, but I am kind of in a hurry now. Turn on my spot GPS, my water. Go ahead and make sure I didn't leave anything. We'll look around here. And I think I'm good to go. Probably won't do a lot of talking on the way out of here because I'm kind of in a hurry, like I said. Uh, I'm gonna kind of try to beeline it and uh, get to the car. But I might shoot a little bit of video for you guys if it's pretty. Let's see how the hike back goes. Yeah, so isn't that just how things go? You get out for a night, try to enjoy yourself. And man, get sick. We knew that my daughter and my whole family, besides me, was exposed to the flu two days ago, but we all did get our shots. And I think my daughter probably has the flu. I've seen quite a few people at the office have diagnosed with the flu, even if they got the shot. Although it is much better than last year. I won't be there in time to take her to the doctor, but um, nonetheless, I'll try to get back as soon as I can. I don't have my wife to have to deal with my sick daughter by herself, so. Anyway, it's been a good trip. I had a good time, that's for sure. It was nice to just relax. I've been going for about uh, 15 minutes. And uh, one of the things I would recommend you guys, even though I'm in a hurry, stop after about 15 minutes, evaluate where you're at. I can tell y'all that I'm a little warm, so I'm going to lose my bottom layer here. One of the things I've learned over the years, sometimes the hard way, is to listen to your body. If you feel something, if you feel hot, or in this case both hot and your foot's rubbing, don't just power through it. Tell you what, I'm actually gonna, it's gonna hike with just a t-shirt. It's warming up quite a bit. Still have my Luca tape on. I use a product called Luca tape to uh, try to prevent blisters. And I'm actually gonna be shooting a video about blister prevention soon. It's on my schedule. Maybe soon, depending on what happens in the next couple of days. But it's on my schedule for this week, if the family is gone. When you're, when you're in a hurry, you're gonna walk faster and put more pressure on your feet. So I think today, if I'm gonna get a blister, it'll be today. Well, that was an opportune time for my memory card to get full. 
here is one campsite guys you can see it's kind of in an opening coming out from over there it's a nice open spot so it is safe from the standpoint of uh, dead trees and stuff but there really isn't any firewood you'd have to probably burn some pine here's a really nice campsite guys this is a campsite I might come with my kids just because it's really isolated only negative is no water nearby but you can see it's got an awesome um, fire pit and then back there it's got a really nice place to put your tent y'all wanna know how crazy Louisiana is look at the sun you'll see it it is it is hailing it is hailing right now out of nowhere that's crazy all right guys I think I'm about half a mile from the car call it quits about to go straight up a hill here so that's not gonna be fun to watch me struggling up a hill so anyway had a good time hope you guys enjoyed it as well a lot of people ask for these overnight adventures and I definitely enjoy doing them don't get to do them as much as I would like but I get to as much as I can so anyway like I said there'll be uh, make sure you check out the video below uh, with all the gear that I use on this trip that video will also have links to all most of the gear that I used um, that you can find around the internet if you're interested in any of them if you're interested in anything specific make sure you comment down below let me know what you want to know about that gear if you like the video make sure you give it a thumbs up down below it really helps spread things across the internet across YouTube and that's how the channel grows and if you want to hang out with us and you're new here make sure you hit the subscription button and you won't miss any of my videos if you want to hit that little ding-dong bell you can do that as well and you'll be the first to know when I release a new video so I'm gonna go check on my daughter who I think has the flu and my wife who I'm pretty sure has the flu and uh, get them home and tucked in plans for the rest of the week will likely change I had plans to shoot a lot of videos and I'll probably just end up shooting a few as long as they're doing okay and the hill begins as always guys I really appreciate you checking out the paleo hiker MD channel it's been fun I'm tired. I'm gonna take a shower. Thanks for watching.